Step across to 30. Step. First needle position, green 18. Step. Left side of pattern knitting from green 18. Step to right side of pattern knitting on green 47. Step. Now you are being asked if you want a fourth pattern area. You do not, so enter zero, step, and you have ready lit with row one in the main display. The motifs you have just knitted were all the same size as explained earlier. The length coordinations are set by our first motif, so if your patterns vary in length, you always program the tallest first. But that does not stop you knitting two different length motifs side by side. On this sample, I have knitted the soldier, pattern 94, with his dog, pattern 97. I can do this because the machine will read anything above the pattern area as blank. So my soldier is 66 rows high and the dog 36. After the first 36 rows, the machine will just carry on knitting the soldier. Now let us see what we can achieve by moving the first needle position or the edge pattern numbers. We have already moved the first needle position to place our all over diamond pattern off center. We also know that by extending our right and left hand edges of a pattern away from the first needle position, we will get repeats of the pattern out to the extended points, and this is exactly what I did in this sample. This time we are going to combine these two options to give us a series of different pattern views. Turn to page 145 and look at the graph for pattern 91. We're going to use all of this pattern so turn the machine on, push selector 2, step, pattern number 91, step, press step again, and one appears for the bottom row of the pattern. Step, 46 appears. Step, 1 for the left, step, and 34 for the right, step. Now we are being asked to place this pattern on our knitwear. Looking at the pattern again, you can see that it is 34 stitches wide. And if you count the stitches, the girl is 16 stitches wide, including the blank space between them, and the boy is 18 stitches wide. So to knit it centrally, as a standard pattern, you would enter yellow 17 for your first needle position. Yellow 17 for the left starting edge of your pattern knitting and green 17 for the right or finishing edge of your pattern knitting. When the machine asks if you want a second area or motif, enter zero and step to get back to ready. Once knitted, you would have this. Now let us see what other effect you can get. This time, we're going to knit a girl, boy, then girl again, which will make your pattern 50 stitches wide. 16 for the girl, 18 for the boy, then another 16 for the second girl. As you don't want to alter the pattern number, you can just keep pushing on the step button. The computer will go through its different stages, giving you the information previously entered. Stop at the first needle position entry. You will need 50 stitches to achieve the pattern, and again, you'll knit it centrally. But don't forget, you can place it anywhere you like on the needle bed. The first needle position is yellow 25. Step. The left starting edge for pattern knitting is yellow 25. Step. The finishing edge will be green 25, step. When the machine asks for a second pattern number, 
enter zero, step, and you have ready. If you look at this knitted sample, the pattern started on yellow 25, you can see the girl, then the boy, they took 34 needles, which took me across to green 9. Then I told the machine to keep repeating the pattern across to green 25. That gave me 16 needles to knit the girl again. Let us reiterate that. We gave the machine a pattern number. We put the first needle position of this pattern on yellow 25. We gave it a left pattern point at yellow 25, then a right pattern point at green 25, which gave it enough space to repeat the pattern once. 34 needles, then another 16 needles, which gave it just enough space to repeat the girl. This time, let us move the left pattern edge away from the first needle position. We want a boy, girl and boy. So we'll need 18, 16 and 18 needles, totaling 52 needles in all. If we centralise this pattern, we're going to be knitting from yellow 26 to green 26. Let's start by continually pushing on the step key again until we get down to the first needle position. Having decided we need space to put a boy at the left of our pattern, we need to move the first needle position across 18 needles. So that will bring it to yellow 8. Step. We're asked where we want the left patterning edge. Enter yellow 26. Step. And the right patterning edge is green 26. Step. Do we want another motif pattern number? Enter zero. Step. And you are ready to knit. So what we have done this time is give the machine a pattern number. We give it a first needle position for the pattern and it will repeat the design outwards from that point yellow 8. Because in this exercise we moved the left start pattern edge back away from the first needle position, we started to get the end of the previous repeat. As we moved back 18 stitches to yellow 26, we got a boy. Then as we put the right outside edge 34 stitches down from our first needle position at green 26, we had one whole repeat of the design, which gave us a girl and boy. Now let us see what can be achieved by using the variation buttons. The first one turns our patterns round to face in the opposite direction. It has three settings. Off, press once and it flashes, on this setting we decide which of our patterns we want to turn around. Each of these nine lights represents our choice of up to nine pattern areas on selector two. Or the first light represents our all over design on selector one. So if we look at our knitted sample of the car, train and road sign again, remember that we programmed and knitted with the reverse side facing so the car was our first pattern. This is symmetrical, so it does not matter if we turn this pattern around, it will not look any different. The second pattern is the road sign. If we want to turn it around, we leave the light flashing. But if we want to leave the pattern as originally knitted, you turn the light off by pressing the number 2 key. The light goes off, so our second pattern does not turn. The third pattern, a train, we will turn to face in opposite direction. So leave the light flashing. In other words, pattern one of the car is represented by light one, which is controlled by key one. Pattern two, the sign, is represented by light two 
and key number two, and so on. Each time you press on the corresponding number, the light turns off or on. Any lights outside of our pattern program, in this case four to nine, will not affect our design whether they are on or off. On an all over design, don't forget you just have one pattern which is represented by light one and key one. Once you have made your choice, press on the variation button number one again. Your choice is confirmed to the machine. Remember, light on, pattern will turn. Light off, it will knit the original way around. Now you are ready to knit. When you have finished, turn the variation key off by pressing on it once more. Variation key number two turns a pattern on its side, a 90 degree rotation. Here, pattern number 37 was knitted on selector one. The next repeat is pattern number 37 knitted through again, but this time I turned variation key number two on. So the pattern is knitting on its side. The original stitches become rows and rows become stitches. You must remember this if you're placing motifs. For instance, pattern number 95 is 24 stitches wide and 76 rows long. I programmed this and only gave 24 stitches for it to knit, then turned variation key number two on. Only the top of the pattern knitted, so I increased the stitches up to 76. Finally, if you want the pattern to knit at 90 degrees, but facing in the other direction, use variation key one and two together. Variation key number three will double the width of a pattern. In other words, it will read and knit each stitch twice. Again, remember that when using key three with motifs, they will need twice the space to knit across. Variation key number four will double the length. It will read and therefore knit each row twice. If you use key numbers three and four together, you will completely double the size of your pattern. Variation key number five gives a vertical reflection. It will knit from bottom to top of the pattern, then knit downwards to the first row again. It only repeats the pivot rows once on each turn to give a true reflection. Variation key number six knits pattern upside down. I used it here to turn the border, which gives a clearer line to this pattern. This key is useful when knitting sleeves, etc., upside down. Variation key number seven is the negative key. It reverses the needle selection. All the black squares become white, so the needles stay back in B position. All the white squares become black, so we'll select to D. On this fair oil sample, the effect given is to change the colors around. Take time to experiment with these keys, mixing them to achieve different effects. The MC rib key is used in conjunction with a ribber and double bed color changer to produce a floatless fair oil plasters double jacquard. Patterns normally have to be specially produced because you are knitting in slip stitch throughout. So each row is built up in layers of color, one at a time. But on the KH965, we can get the machine to convert all of our fair isle or motif type stitch patterns ready to knit double jacquard simply by pressing the MC rib key. The M key tends to be called 
the neck memo key because it is frequently used when separating the work to knit the neck shaping. On the machine, have a piece of fair arm knitting ending with the carriage at the left at the point where you will be putting the right half of the knitting into hold position, ready to knit the first side of the neck. Instructions for doing this can be found on page 66 of your manual. At this point, press the M key. That will tell the computer to remember the pattern row number that you are about to knit, so that when you come to knit the right side of the neck, you can start the pattern at the same point. Turn the row counter to zero and knit the left side. Cast off any center neck stitches. We're now ready to knit the third piece of the neck. Place the carriage outside the right turn mark. This is the opposite side to where you'll be joining the yarn. Place all the needles back to B position. Turn the change knob to KC and make sure both the part buttons are pressed in. When the carriage is set to slip with both part buttons in and you have the required needles in B position, you can do a free move. Press the M key again and you will see the pattern row number go to the same point used for starting the left side of the neck. Take carriage across the work to pre-select your needles. Row counter back to zero, release the part buttons and push in the MC button. Place both yarns back into their feeders and carry on knitting the right part of the neck. The above instructions apply to fair isle, tuck stitch, slip stitch and weaving. If you are knitting lace, the M key works in a slightly different way. Having knitted up to the point of neck separation, finish when the pattern row indicates that you have just knitted two rows with the main carriage. You then press the up arrow key once. The pattern row number jumps to the next row. Now press the M key. Please note needles cannot be placed into E position when using the lace carriage. Refer to page 68 of your instruction manual. When you are ready to knit the right side, you simply place all stitches to position B, ready to knit. Press the M key, row counter to zero, and start your patterning with the lace carriage. No pre-select row is necessary with lace. Your KH965 machine is capable of storing lots of your own stitch patterns in a separate memory space. All sorts of pattern designs can be stored tuck, slip, weaving, fair isle, and on this machine, three colour in a row patterns as well. There is plenty of memory space to take these designs. The machine can store up to 199,600 pattern stitches, or 98 pattern numbers, whichever is used up first. Each time you enter a pattern into the machine's memory, you will be given a storage number starting with 901, 902, etc. so that whenever you wish to knit the pattern, you simply enter that number. If we now look at the pattern input section, we have the 10 indicator lights, the two input buttons for entering standard patterns, the input key, which activates this side of the computer, the memo key for entering color change or lace carriage information, the left and right direction keys, the check key, the buzzer key, which is used to check a pattern entry, and the key marked C for cancelling patterns. Using the design sheet supplied with your machine, mark out the pattern that you want to store in your machine's memory onto the graph squares. Leave enough space each side to mark in stitch and row numbers, colour change information, and most important, a space to enter the number that the machine allocates to your pattern.
Remember, you are using an electronic machine, so you only have to draw out and enter one repeat of a pattern, and that your pattern can be as large or small as you wish. Also, you can enter patterns directly from a knitting book, simply by following the design sheet printed. If it's a small stitch design, and it has been repeated all over a punch card, you only need enter one repeat. I am ready to enter a pattern. I've marked it out, numbering the stitches and rows, and having decided I want a blank stitch between each repeat included in the design. Turn the machine on and press the input button. The machine allocates a pattern number for the design. Enter that number onto the sheet. Then push the step button and one shows in the memo window. There are two input variations for this machine. One covers all standard patterns, fair isle, tuck stitch, etc. Two is for entering three colour in a row patterns only. One is in the memo window and I'm not going to alter it. Press the step button again. The stitch indicator will light up next to the main display. My pattern is 12 stitches wide, so enter 12, then step. The row indicator is lit, telling me that I have 998 rows to design on if I wish. The pattern is actually 6 rows deep, so enter 6 and push step. The machine is now ready to enter row 1 of the pattern data. I would suggest that you rest your hand on the machine and hold two fingers one over each of the input keys. The black one represents a filled in square of the design which select a needle to D position and the white one represents a blank square. This needle will stay in B position. The first six squares are black. As I enter the data, the machine tells me which stitch I am working on and the corresponding indicator lights will turn on if I press a black square and stay off if I press the white one. The rest of the pattern row is blank. There's no need to press the white square six times. If I tell the machine to move on to the next row, by pushing the up key, it will read it as empty. For the second row, I have one white, five black, one white, four black, and one white. You get a long tone at the end of a row. As I entered the data for the 11th stitch, the first 10 lights scroll out of sight and the indicator lights are now clear to receive the data for stitches 11 to 20. On this particular design, the long tone occurs after stitch 12 has been entered, because this is the last stitch of my pattern. Use the up key again to move to row 3. Notice the row indicator lights up and 3 is in the window. Once I start entering information, that changes to stitch numbers and the stitch indicator lights. If a mistake is made, it's easy to use the return key to work backwards. In this case, I've blacked in square 7, which should have been white. So I push on the return key until 7 appears in the display window. I now press the correct key white in this case, then carry on from there. Be warned though that as the return key is used we are deleting the data for that stitch, so this is an easy way of correcting information just entered. But if you've gone quite a long way past a mistake, it may be easier to correct through the checking system, which I'll take you through later. When the last row has been entered, press the input light off 
and from now the pattern can be knitted at any time, simply by asking for pattern number 901. One last thing. Should you need to leave the machine in the middle of inputting a pattern, don't worry. Simply turn the input light off, turn the machine off. Then when you're ready to continue, use the check program to finish the design entry. When inputting a three colour in a row design, check that the design has an even number of rows. Also bear in mind that these designs are actually knitted as a slip stitch, one colour at a time. So unless you want to change the yarn colour every row, you will be using the double length variation button number four whilst knitting. The pattern will knit twice the length of the design. It makes life a lot easier if you use a colour changer for this type of work. To enter the pattern, push the input key. The machine gives me a pattern number 902 to write alongside my pattern. Press the step key and it shows that it is ready to input this pattern in the standard mode 1. So press number 2 to change the mode to enter three colour in a row. Press step and the stitch indicator comes on. My pattern is seven stitches wide, so I enter seven and step. Now the row indicator lights up. The number shown represents how many rows can be entered up to 332. The machine will have to split each of the pattern rows out into three colours ready to knit the design. So it can only offer a third of the usual amount of rows. The design is six rows deep, so I press six and step. I am now ready to enter the first pattern row. To do this, I use the number one key as main or first color, number two key as second color, and number three key as color three. The first two squares are color one, so I press key one twice. The next two are color two, then two in color three, last one, color one. Note that color one is represented by a blank in the indicator lights. Color two is lit and color three is a flashing light. Push the up key to move to the next row. I now carry on entering the pattern until all rows are completed, then turn the input button off to store the pattern in the memory. When you come to knit these patterns, please remember the following. You will need variation button number four turned on. This will give you two rows of each colour, enabling you to use a colour changer. If you're using a river and double bed colour changer to knit double jacquard, you will need the number four variation button on and the MC rib key turned on, so that on any rows containing one or two colours instead of three, the machine will ensure that you carry all three colours along on the river to keep the fabric correct. In both cases, after programming and when the ready light is lit, you have the carriage outside of the right turn mark, turn to KC and select from right to left. Then press both slip buttons on the top bed for double jacquard. Set the river before knitting.